Um, welcome everybody back here um, at the Martin e. Siegel Theater at Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in uh, New York City. Um, in New York, which has been hit uh, most, New York State, I think we have more uh, coronavirus victims dead people than states around the world, over 10,000. Uh, and now the, the streets are empty, uh, the shops are closed, theaters are dark. Um, it's uh, in our lifetime, at least for our generation, um, an incredible, um, unpred unpredicted uh, a, a moment. Uh, Reality is truly really, is uh, stranger than fiction, and uh, a small invisible virus is attacking us humans, who are multi-cell organisms, you know, of trillions. And but they go inside and uh, rage a battle. And at the moment, it looks like we are losing a lot of them. Um, we at the Siegel Center Bridge Academia on professional theater, and especially international, global theater, and American theater for for decades, and um, we have been uh, in contact with artists around the world, and we listen to their voices. That's what we do, and um, we feel it's important to hear from artists in our society. They have a special, significant place. Right now, in this uh, crisis, we hear from virologists and economic advisors, politicians, the heads on television. Uh, between commercials often, um, we need to hear the voices uh, from artists. Artists are looking for truth, as do the scientists, which is the first rule to be truthful and look for the truth, even if it puts your life in danger. Um, and uh, artists have been on the right side of justice, progressive justice, and on the right side of history, if you really look closely, almost all of the time. I think now is the time, again, like uh, the opening of the Berlin Wall, 9-11, uh, end of World War II, something is changing, something already has changed, we might not have even seen it, um, everything that's perhaps good is now coming out, but what's bad and horrible uh, is uh, even worse and more, even more frightening, the future is uncertain, Meredith Monk said you don't be afraid of uncertainty. Uh, we have to find the way to live with this. The, our Indian puppet player yesterday, Anurupa, said, you know, why she will switch and say, let's see, maybe we do plays with uncertainty and no longer the happy endings. Uh, and uh, but everything will make sense because as Thomas Ostermeyer also said here, this virus does not make any sense. It's chaotic. Let's not read any uh, uh, false uh, spiritual meanings in it. It's something we have to go through, but it's time to prepare. It's time to prepare for young artists. It will be over, everything passes, and, um, but it's time to think. And this, these talks, the Siegel talks, which we now had was over three weeks, is a, is a place where we do think and um, where we uh, also really want to, to, to share our experience. Um, today we have a, a, a truly significant theater on the global scale uh, with us, uh, a theater that has been pioneering work a theater that has uh, over decades now shown uh, um, that uh, it sustains a, a level of artistic quality, uh, intellectual engagement, and also an aesthetic results uh, that comes out of a production method that is uh, successful. It comes out of the great country of Poland, a great theater nation. Some say a superpower. Um, if you look back also the Kantor Kotowski, Ruzlewicz, uh, and uh, the great directors, we just had Lupa also, uh, who is connected to this theater and with, with us at the Siegel. And it is the great uh, TR uh, Varsova, a theater that uh, was after the opening of the wall and all of it uh, reinvented in a way by uh, Gregor Jajina, uh, who is here with us. Gregor, thank you for coming. And he's here. Uh, his team is this Agata Kovac, you know, who works uh, for the uh, Tia Barsova, also for the international uh, relations, the global thinking that uh, Tia Barsova does so well, I think, to act locally, to think locally, produce locally, but think globally and do be in contact with countries around the world, theater artists, and also with the Siegel Center. And with us also is Roman Pavlovsky, who is uh, the dramaturg, uh, a great thinker of theater, um, also someone who, um, has uh, uh, been worked as a curator and has an overview of the uh, theme in Poland. And um, something very unique is happening with this theater, despite complications that we hear from Poland that we also don't know enough about it. We are a bit on the outside, how what uh, the situation is. They are building a very new space. They are building a theater in a significant uh, uh, neighborhood in Warsaw. And it's a theater for the 21st century, a theater that is engaging hopefully, and they will, as I understand, in a very new way. 
So in taking into account the digital, all the stuff we now think about, what do we do now? How do we connect? Uh, how our our audience members are not just admirers at uh, Gregor said, but really partners um, and uh, uh, the, they are working on solutions for this, but uh, they have not taken into account the coronavirus, perhaps also not everything that's politically happening in Europe, but um, right now um, they are all in their um, homes. They uh, said the openness and mobility is the most significant uh, uh, parameters for their work, but now we cannot be open, we don't meet people, we are not mobile, um, they are in their uh, apartments. So uh, welcome everybody, and uh, Gregor, starting with you, how do you feel? Where are you now? And what time is it in Poland? Uh, it's uh, six past six uh, p.m., so uh, in the evening. Thank you for invitation. Uh, welcome everybody who was uh, listening to us. Um, it's an uh, honor to, to have this public and to talk with uh, you, Frank. Mm, I'm very, very sorry and uh, about situation in, in New York. Many of my friends uh, sending very dramatic information. And um, it's really very sorry for all the society from New York or all America. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Mm, what about us? The, as, as you mentioned, we have uh, uh, many plans and uh, we thinking about the future uh, in the same time thinking about the local society and local problems. Uh, as you know, probably uh, the situation, political situation and social situation in Poland, it's not very good. So we see in our kind of the mission of TR we see as well um, our role in um, speaking about nowadays especially about the values that's for us is the most important uh, the values in the time where we a little bit slow down because uh, everybody feel that we rush so much and we don't have time to really think uh, what is about our life and what is the goal of our life so now for us uh, is the time to thinking about the values that, that is our main things and uh, we focus on that. Um, and uh, that's what we doing now uh, as a team, uh, as a company, then our main things is con con contact with the people uh, through, uh, of course now through the Zoom or other communication, but making many new relation and having more time to speak, more time to, listen other people and more, more time to uh, uh, to re recognize uh, what are the problem and uh, and think it over how we can what we can deliver as a as a company that's that's we uh, feel our very special mission now what we can deliver what we can uh, give the people now in this very very difficult times what what are your values Pardon? Uh, what um, you said you're ba thinking values. about the values. What this, are the yeah, values? Yeah, yeah, values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that for us is very important. Is the the in our situation the, the, for me and for us is very important the the truth. That's that's uh, and honest. That is something which is on, not only uh, 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 it's not only concerning the politician and the people which have really big influence on our life and our condition nowadays. Uh, but that, that is the most important that we can be honest with each other and can say truthful and not manipulating uh, the information, not uh, uh, making the new uh, statement which doesn't exist. That's the, the truth is this, this value for, for us, which is from my side, at least the most important now. And of course, uh, the empathy, that is another uh, value, which is very important, empathy, so we can imagine what is the point of view or what is the situation of other people? What is the situation of others? And uh, that is more specific, it doesn't concern, of course, uh, other, uh, your country, but in our, our country, it's very important to understand those others, those people which are nowadays 
are not Polish, they are not a kind of the nation, what they uh, propose, those people which helping building our society, building not only economy, but building our, our lives. And now those people are uh, on, uh, on the other, other side. Those people, we don't care about them, we forgot about them. And uh, at the beginning, I thought this, this, this uh, pandemic, the, it's very democratic, but nowadays, of course, uh, it's not democratic. Many people have to work, many people have to uh, face this uh, problem, and those people don't, uh, uh, don't have the help. Uh, from us, don't they need relations now, and they working that we can sitting in our homes and working uh, uh, mm, mm, from our homes. And but there's many people, especially in Poland, which are nobody taking care about them because simply they are not Polish. That that's uh, that is very uh, shame even to saying about it. But uh, this barrier that those people that we divide the people on the special groups and saying those groups uh, don't have any privilege. And that, that is something which now in Poland, especially in Poland, uh, Hungary, of course, yes, but especially in Poland after this time of solidarity and this uh, achievement of solidarity, now those values are very, very forgotten in, in our policy. Yeah. Um, um, Agata, how is the situation in Poland on the street? How does the government handle everything? What, what do you detect? Do, do people go out? I guess all theaters are also closed, but how is the situation uh, and the mood? Hello, everyone. And like I say uh, as well from my side, like very, very sorry for this. How does it look like in US? We are like really with you. We are not in such a bad situation, or officially we are not, because we are not sure if all the numbers about the number of the victims are true or, or false, uh, but we are like following your stories and it's important to us to say as well that we are sorry. In Poland, of course, like we are in the lockdown and uh, I really think that our lockdown is a little bit ambiguous uh, when it comes about the real strict rules. So we know that we are obliged to stay at home and that there are really few, like four, uh, four exceptions because of which we can go out. We don't have any documents like in France to prove it. We are not sending the text messages to the government like in Greece, but, but we need to tell it if we are asked by the police what was the reason because of which we are on the street. Uh, we hope that it will be a little bit lighter starting from next week because this is what we have learned yesterday that parks and forests and let's say recreation walks will be somehow allowed so that will be a change. Uh, but of course theaters are closed, cinemas are closed and uh, from the plan that has been presented yesterday by the government, theaters, cinemas, gyms, and the like fitness clubs and massage studios will be opened as the last one. So uh, this is something which put us in this uh, like really state of the anxiety. Uh, there is like as well the discussion about why the churches are being opened or like allowing people to go there, like one person per 15 meters, quarter meters uh, to go there at once. Uh, and in the theaters and other venues which are easier to really manage how the audience is being uh, welcomed and uh, and gathered. Okay, it's nice. not possible yet. So uh, this is how we uh, how we live. It people are not on street. Like people are not living from their houses if they really don't need to. They are like if they are on the streets, they're queuing uh, in the line to the supermarkets. And uh, here, like when Gregor said that there are so many excluded people, this is uh, really really visible that those who are on the streets are those who are going to do this shopping or the homeless people who now are absolutely lonely. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a disaster yeah, um, everywhere in the disaster. world for homeless people, um, also sex workers, people um, who uh, don't have their uh, means. Uh, we just had yesterday a heartbreaking call from India and Rupa Roy, the puppet player director said 600,000 people uh, left, uh, tried to leave New Delhi uh, yesterday last week on a foot march like a biblical with children's on their backs and their belongings and then they had to return the state borders closed to their villages of artists with a thousand families and they don't have a touring companies who don't even have a home they are organizing food banks and and it's chaotic uh, some are closed some are opened also in pakistan 
um, we heard um, from um, Lebanon uh, where, you know, the making theater already is so complicated and uh, it's impossible to uh, um, now do anything and the state is uh, clamping down um, on, um, on the citizens. So it is uh, just uh, um, devastating black playwrights who are with us from the Black Fest said, you know, family, their families uh, actually who do work and also in the service industries uh, not only get blamed because they say all oh, the community doesn't pay attention and they might infect us. He also says, yeah, our families are making wills in right now in New York and Brooklyn and Queens everywhere because for over centuries they have been the disenfranchised and we have to protect ourselves. They say we don't have health insurance, we don't have jobs, but we also work. We are the ones in the hospitals, the security guards. Um, Tony Morrison, who once said the people who had to take the early bus, they are the ones who also died in 9-11. So uh, this is um, um, and a great tragedy. Um, Roman, um, as a, a theater thinker, as someone who's dedicated uh, his life uh, to theater, do you, do you feel, do you think this is uh, changing fundamentally the internal hard drive? Is it reconfigured or do you say it's a confirmation of what we always thought and now we are even more sure? Well, uh, thank you, Frank, for this um, question and the possibility to share our experiences and thoughts. I think that this is really crucial for us to be together, to support our relations and, and, and to build a kind of virtual uh, theater community. So thank you for this. Uh, yes, uh, crisis as always is a chance to change, to make a change. And uh, we are at TR Warszawa we do our best to, to use this opportunity and uh, to, to build a, a better future for, for our organization and uh, artists which are associated with us. I'm not talking about only about uh, our day by day activity, but I'm talking about our perspectives, about our future plans because now it's time, uh, I'm, I'm completely right with Jagosh. This is the time to be uh, in a kind of solidarity with the others, but also this is the time to create, to think, and to, uh, as Thomas Ostermeyer mentioned, to, to, to shape our future. And, and we, are, we, are, uh, we are a public theater. So we've got uh, really a mission which is not narrow only to entertainment. Uh, we need to be with our audiences, we need to be with our creators, and we need to create uh, new possibilities uh, uh, for, for, for performing arts. And uh, so, so now our activity is based and focused on internet uh, projects. We are transmitting, um, we are broadcasting uh, recordings of some of our performances but uh, also we are developing some new projects which are uh, especially dedicated to the digital uh, environment. Uh, and I strongly believe that uh, we will stay, a part of our activity will stay um, virtual, that the platforms and tools that we've been developing now uh, can be used uh, in the future when we hopefully uh, come back to uh, to our um, uh, building and to our stages. So uh, now it's, it's time to, to think more uh, above, uh, behind, the, behind the, the horizon. This is, this is what we are doing now. Thank you. Um, and Grigosh, uh, when is the last time you were out of your apartment uh, and working in the theater? How, for how long is it lockdown now going on for you personally? For me, it's I start very early because of my family. Uh, your start, family is uh, tell us a bit about your family. Uh, <laughs> mm, I um, yeah, we are four of us, uh, and uh, my uh, I would say stepson is very needed very special care, so he's in the very high group of risk. Uh, so we locked down at the very, very beginning, like four or five weeks ago. I don't remember exactly now. Uh, we don't go outside. Uh, my wife, uh, Anya, is very well organized. So we, she organized everything perfectly before. Uh, so we, uh, we really sitting at home. I was outside. It was four days or three days ago. 
and because of manifestation uh, of uh, yes uh, uh, about the law which is now the our parliament uh, the law very very strict barbarian law against the pregnancy and abortion and about uh, um, this is the law that allowed the children to going to to shoot the shoot the to uh, to shoot the animals so now I, I, I even it's difficult to say to talk about it it's like really horrible what's going on it's kind of aberration it's kind of really uncontrollable uh, of course and purpose the uh, for sure on purpose the movement of the, our government which have uh, thinking about their only particular goals they don't think about the society so we went out and we with the car because of course it's forbidden now in poland to be together and to make the manifestation so we just uh, going around in the center of warsaw with other people and making manifestation and saying that we don't want uh, we, we we putting our voice uh, to that the people in parliament can and politicians can hear us so, so you had a car the, with cars uh, demonstration a torso going through warsaw and <clears throat> and uh, and having the horns on, I guess. And how many people? Yeah, horn, horns and yeah, only <clears throat> two people because in now is the law in Poland that we only be two. Uh, we can't have three people together, so only two people can be in the car. And uh, horns and of course uh, some texts and we have the mannequin and and yeah all, all the symbols. We have a big mm. uh, car, uh, so we've been very very visible. Uh, how many we, cars we, participated? Oh. Uh, I, we, did, it's the, we didn't count, but it was like around 1,000 uh, cars and of course the bicyclists, many bicyclists and um, and yeah, that was, we, we call it the women's strike. It's kind of the tradition since a couple of years, since the new government is the new women's strike action. So it was um, a lot beautiful, a lot of beautiful people which are being very, feel the solidarity between us and uh, that was good time. That was good time that we can, uh, as we see somebody that somebody is thinking differently. That what we are receiving from the public TV and the uh, public social media. Um, yes, mm -hmm. that was my last time. So and I of course, of course, I am, I am, I am the freak about the, the plants. So I going outside home and with uh, working. Uh, working in the yet yeah, it's not the garden in the on the street and uh, putting the new plants on the street so it, it gives me as well a, a lot of uh, pleasure as well and communication with the neighbors so I became on my street the the new uh, the, the the gardener so everybody is calling me today and, and what to buy and many people going outside <laughs> and uh, planting the plants that that is uh, uh, one of the good things about this uh, stuff that really people start to think about environment yeah um, so it's Grigosh the gardener that is is coming <laughs> the gardener yes <laughs> <laughs> so how does a day look like can you talk us uh, through a day what time do you get up and what do you do what what how does a day look like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, it's like lifestyle magazine. Okay, yes. I, 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 I do for you, Frank. I never do it. Yes. But I wake up at nine thirty, having a very short breakfast, and then I watching what is about what's going on in the emails and what the situation, and then I start the rehearsal at eleven o'clock. We running. We decided to run online rehearsal, which we're doing now. The Tempest by Shakespeare. We stop it in the middle of the process. So we said we would like to meet uh, through the Zoom and uh, continue the rehearsals. And, mm -hmm. and that, that, is, uh, that is two things. One, one thing is that we don't, we, we have many, not many, but we have the discussion with our team. And the situation is quite difficult in our public theater. We, we all are paid, but the actors are paid by the performances. They have some salaries from coming monthly, but are not so high. And uh, that's, and they don't, they, and there's one aspect and the second aspect is they can't do nothing now. So it's very important for them that we can work, we can meet. And may, at the beginning of the rehearsal, we're talking what is going, going uh, with us. 
So uh, the contact, the sharing, the relation, uh, mm, it's really important uh, to learn each other more. We, we know uh, very well, but we, uh, but this uh, kind of the contact makes us much, we, we just explore the different, uh, 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 different uh, parts, different uh, aspects of ourselves. So, and of course, it's much more deeper, uh, be honest. Uh, uh, so that is important. And, uh, and we're trying uh, later, we're trying to put it uh, uh, on, on our work and how it could influence uh, our work in the future. Yesterday, we have very important talk that uh, we don't really want to do the online situation, online performances. We just would like to work uh, and, uh, of course, we're thinking about it probably will be not possible to give the opening as we planned, uh, but to give some uh, online transmission when we can gather in the theater in the future. Uh, but we're waiting for this true uh, contact with the audience. We can do, uh, we can show our work, but we're waiting for the real contact uh, uh, at the theater. It, it could be in two years time or one year time, uh, but that that is important for us that we believe in this personal, emotional, uh, energy theater, and we would like to feel the audience, and we want uh, that audience will feel us. Uh, so that I am very satisfied. Uh, that built me up, uh, that uh, beat me up. That uh, team is thinking like that. That we have a long distance uh, uh, goal. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not now, it's not the communication, it's not the likes, it's not nothing about that. We would like to stay behind our values, now values about the theater, and we need really, we need the contact with the people, and we will prepare for that. How long do you rehearse online? We rehearse, so we say, now we say only two hours because uh, uh, we would like to. Um, not to, we, have, we would like to have uh, concentration. And later, of course, after two hours with actors, we're meeting with the other uh, artists which compose this theater. Now, uh, later are the meetings with the people which are thinking how to produce this theater in the new situation. So these meetings about this project is um, like four hours online a day at least. And of course, later, uh, there are many meetings online uh, concerning the theater. It's, the similar situation that now we, for instance, now I've just finished the meeting, which always uh, now is like every week almost with the whole team. We're meeting with the administration. So that is another good situation that is like 20 people joining the meeting and uh, we can see everybody and uh, we can learn about uh, ourselves more. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of you know, I, I'm looking for the positive things. It's integration, yeah. and yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's, so you you work bad. It's 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 not yeah. bad. So you work really hard. I mean, that sounds like if you have. Full yeah, we all we work is, hard. Yeah. Rom, Rom, yeah. Roman, Agatha, we we yeah. finish really. I, I'm finished. I finish Frank. Uh, be honest, six, seven, uh, uh, but those. To people, Agatha and Roman, they working to ten o'clock and online. You know, they really. Yesterday we have at, at night they're sending what is going on. Yeah, they and you, very, it's the end of the week. You must have a long, hard week uh, behind you. So really, really, thank you, Agatha. Tell us a little bit. Yeah. More work now. That's true. It's more work now than uh, before. Like it's more because we need to reshape it somehow and answer this need of how could we now frame this what is our potential as the archive that we have with this what we may do live and how to animate the actors of course the company the ensemble within our team but our audiences we really have learned through this few weeks that we are uh, in the lockdown already that uh, people need the theater and in poland i think it's really significant that the first live transmission like the broadcasts from our uh, archive from the Pieces of a Woman with Cornel Mundrucho, it was like 8,000 people watching mm. it at the, you know, at once. So 8,000, mm. so, 8, so that was the same number of people that twice of the audiences that we would gather in Avignon when we were invited with this piece. So uh, like we really feel this mission 
that uh, having the feedback from the audiences from whole Poland and not only because we mm. try to do it always with English subtitles. So we hear a lot of the people who are not from Warsaw, not from our, let's say, first circle and who are like really writing to us on Facebook or like via other communicators that, hey, we wouldn't come that easily because it's like 400 kilometers or something. Now we really love to be with you. And this time that we spend with you in the Fieta is the time of our going out from the isolation, from our daily routine. It's really this mm -hmm. special evening that they're organizing. Maybe it is because we have decided to do those broadcasts always at the same time, same day. So like yeah. Saturday evening, which means, okay, this is the Fiat opportunity. Uh, so they get easily used to this uh, rhythm but it works. And this is what we decided to do as well, is always to joining the presentations together with the meetings of, with the team of the performance that has been presented. So we uh, get like the live contact in all those like private contexts, like here you see us in our homes, uh, with actors, with directors, with dramaturgs of the performance that are presented. And people are really welcome to ask questions and they do. And mm. this is amazing as well to see how much there are more open in those interactions when it can be written, not being like, you know, raised hand in the after talk mm -hmm. after the performance. So something so, uh, is something is, is changing and we, we are detecting it. Um, how is the situation, I think Gregor mentioned it, for the artists who are actors, they don't have the contract, do they have health insurance? Uh, is the Polish government, the state, which we all think we look up to, I don't know how it really is, but how is the situation for for theater artists in the free theater experimental scene, how is that? Well, there's um, li very little, uh, very little programs and uh, support for the freelancers. They can get uh, a very small if if they had contracts, uh, temporary contracts or contracts for one performance, uh, they could get from the government a small amount of money only once. I've heard that the recent decision was to to enlarge it to three months, but it's it's like, uh, I don't know, $300 a month. So it's really nothing. It's nothing, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the Ministry of Culture announced um, uh, some new programs, new grant programs for supporting new ideas. Uh, also, the city of Warsaw uh, is planning to, to, to open uh, a call for new projects. But some, many freelancers, they have problems with, uh, with uh, the, the number of production, productivity, uh, over -product -product productivity, if you know what I mean. Uh, they, uh, they are waiting for support. They are not waiting for engagements, for new possibilities to work because their works were canceled or rescheduled. So uh, the number of new projects uh, is not a solution. Um, and another problem is as well that it's not always the genre that, then, that they like, that they are theater artists. So being now asked to do something like for the broadcast live stream or online project, it's not always something that talks to their aesthetics and to the, uh, like the, the feeling of the theater that they were producing. Sorry, Roman, to interrupt you. Well, I, I just want to say that, uh, uh, well, uh, Poland is one of the, one of these countries where, where there is no uh, system, social system for, uh, for freelance artists. So there's no health insurance for them. Uh, there is no health, officially, really? there's no health uh, insurance for them. So they need to, to have a, a fictional pay, a payroll or, or an engagement, or sometimes uh, the small amount of, of, the, of the fee is, is dedicated to, to health insurance, but it's only temporary. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's really a disaster when, when you've got a pandemic and you don't have insurance. And it's, right. I mean, uh, comparing, of course, the United States, States has got uh, another system of, yeah. Or, but or everything has, that's yeah, that's but but in, but but in Europe, you know, comparing to to Germany or to France, uh, really Polish perform performative artists, and basically all the freelance artists, visual composers, musicians, they are really uh, on a desert now. Um, so they need some help and and uh, institutions uh, like our theater try to help them. 
to engage them, to, to give them opportunity to make small projects, but it's also producing, producing, producing. producing, we, are, producing yeah. we, are, we are not, I mean, we are not, uh, um, we cannot be in a, a, a charity institution, you know, so, so yeah. it's of, of course against law and there is so many limitations. Yeah. But, but we try to uh, re reshape some of our um, some of our, some of our productions which were scheduled for this year. So we, we, we are trying to reshape them to uh, to build a kind of uh, digital prologue or digital module element, which can work as a promotional material, but also it can work as a kind of support for, for our artists. associated mm -hmm. artists. And uh, recently we've doing uh, an interesting project, which is called uh, uh, Reap Kora, Rest in Peace Kora. Um, it, it is inspired by um, a Greek ancient myth of Persephone. And uh, uh, a group of actors, the team of actors, uh, is creating profiles on Facebook and Instagram, the, the profiles of characters, actually uh, ancient gods, but in a modern uh, version. Uh, and they, they built like groups of followers. And this week they, they started the first interactions and live streamings. So this, this project will last for another three, four weeks, we hope. And uh, the material we will collect uh, during this um, internet activity will be used also on stage. So it's also kind of preparation yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, during the time that the rehearsals are not possible. Incredible that the Greek gods and the theater gods are moving into Instagram and Facebook. And we say that's a good thing because now what we think was not real is becoming real or perhaps one of the few real things we are now talking. <clears throat> and everything, as you said, you know, about Polish society, but also in America or everywhere, everything that's not working is so utterly exposed when we hear from India or in Egypt, uh, from Hong Kong and others. Um, something has to change where everybody says this, uh, this is, uh, has been going on for too long, things that are not working and we have to be part of the change. But we also do art and theater. So Gregor, uh, if you rehearse online, um, do you detect a change? Toshiki Okada, the great uh, uh, Japanese director and writer, you know, he said what was odd, he rehearses also online because he wants to keep his company going. All of a sudden the actor is on the screen and there's the same space and same time. He, felt, he doesn't really know, is it more democratic or not? Do you feel there is a change in work? Do you detect something early on that there is a difference in these kind of new digital world we live in? We often say, you know, that Brecht said he wants theater for the children of the technological age, but now we have to make maybe theater for the children of the digital age. Are they already there? Maybe you guys are. And so, do you detect something in your work that is different when you now rehearse than perhaps, a, you, I know it's very early on, but is there something? Yes, yes, Frank, I just would like to, to add to this uh, um, information that of course, as a theater, we try to help, but I can be, honest it's little little help from very little amount of people which are artists in poland uh, mm -hmm. a lot of my colleagues and a lot of friends which are really have very very difficult situation very they don't have help they don't have any money and they don't know what to do and slowly they going into kind of the depression because they know they don't know when it's finished and they can't produce more art, they can't paint more, they can't compose more because they don't believe that they can show up later. So mm -hmm. that is, uh, that this disease show how our system is really, really not democratic and how particular uh, interest uh, uh, are uh, in our, uh, our politics. So that's of course, when you're asking me about rehearsal, of course I am in the very good situation because I, I have this privilege that I am paying monthly from public theater and, yeah. um, and a good situation and we can work. Uh, of course, uh, we can work and 
Um, that's this this kind of work, of course, is different. Uh, I can see after this uh, uh, couple of weeks that uh, the the focus is in different way in our work now. Uh, it's more we thinking about uh, the messages which are not particular sending in contemporary in that moment, no, not in this moment. Rather, we thinking and we change a little bit the script as well for the messages which we can work in five years or good work in the future and nowadays as well. So we're working for the more, uh, let's say, uh, not temporary values. It's, mm -hmm. let's say, less political, but in the same way, it's much more political. It's uh, we, we trying and thinking to building much more the uh, uh, stronger basement uh, for our voice. So that, that is the differences. Of course, uh, we're working on the screen. We don't act, but we talk and we think a lot. And we reading, we listen to each other, uh, uh, and that that is as that is very interesting as well. Another kind of work which for certainly have the some other uh, um, uh, the normal uh, face to face rehearsal. Um, that's as I said before, we are much more recognized and we watch more digging in our uh, um, under consciousness and we digging much more in our thoughts. It's, uh, and of course, all the time we're talking uh, about the main kind and this kind of the, yeah, we, that's what is happening now about crisis. But we're talking a lot about uh, main kind. What, what is going with mankind, what is our brain, and what we do as a mankind through this uh, thousand years. And of course, that uh, when we jumping, for instance, to the Greek theater, uh, I, I, I think that we don't make any progress. We don't make, we don't make progress in moral way. Uh, we make, we build in the civilization, we have the technological progress, but in fact now, we very uh, aware that we fuck up our uh, our planet and we fuck up our system and that's what we can do through this age uh, through the years especially after the second war we lost it we lost it because we ate everything and we rush and we fight for something which is not really human. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting because uh, significantly uh, the last premiere because before the lockdown at TR Warszawa was the adaptation of a very famous book by Ursula Le Guin, Always Coming Home, which is uh, um, uh, a, a utopia. Uh, the action happens in 300 years time from now after the collapse of civilization. And on the ruins of the previous world, the new mankind is trying to build a new uh, community, which has nothing to do with our uh, neoliberal capitalistic free market system. And, and I strongly believe that uh, this is kind of the sign, the, the direction that we would, uh, that we have to, not only we would like to, we have to follow now. M more solidarity, more closer uh, relations with the people, locality versus globality, int intimacy. Uh, this is the values that yeah, I recognize, I identify uh, within my work and within our team. We are much more closer, despite the fact that we are isolated, we are more closer in, in terms of emotions, uh, sharing, uh, thoughts sharing, um, also threats and uh, all, all the uh, emotions that are connected with this iso isolation. But uh, Grzegorz, uh, Grzegorz once said that we don't have, uh, we, we have the choice, uh, expression or depression. So we chose, uh, we chose uh, expression. Uh, so be alive means for us to 
work to build new plants to to uh, to support this this little community. Mm -hmm. um, Agatha, yes, we really uh, feel it as our responsibility. It, so, yeah, is it you are also part of the international called the global outreach? Is it getting closer locally, or do you feel there's also a moment you connect to <clears throat> to the global world in a, a different way, new way? So just before we've met, I had like two hours seminar with Onda, which means like the the the, the network of the French theaters and uh, that connects uh, people to make tournée like more successful in frames of Franco like French speaking word, uh, and uh, you really can see that now we somehow more focus that of course for us who works on international uh, I wouldn't say like touring like on international meaning of our works it's like the great challenge now to think what would international means because it's not obligatory that it will stick to be like the mobility. It's rather about the ideas. And actually this is the model of work that we were already introducing into our company. So we were inviting uh, the directors that we uh, respect and that we find inspiring and that we wanted to meet the Polish audiences and of course uh, Polish actors with to work with our ensemble. But that was based on, you know, like, five, seven people coming to work with our team to produce the work that we were both responsible for and then going to tour. That's the case of Cornel Mundruto, that's the case of uh, René Polish who used to work with us with Jana Ross. So uh, somehow this model of work based rather on the residency in exchange than in mobility is something that is here with here with us and we discuss how it may be because mm -hmm. for now we just wait like when the flights will be possible but if flights will be still the solution to organize the presentations that's the question the great question for now like all, all what we have planned uh, before like late summer has been cancelled and we are absolutely with uh, our colleagues and curators who invited us for Kunst and Festival des Arts and for Avignon uh, and we like wish them the best for the for the next editions, like hoping it's hoping gonna be it possible in some new frames. But yeah. uh, we hope that this what we have planned for like August and September, like Rutriennale, will be still possible That's for sad. us to share. Because always this what we were producing was like point of departure of the discussion and exchange on emotions and point of view uh, with new emotionality of other uh, audiences and their yeah. habits. So yeah. we do hope that it will be still possible, not only like the broadcast of the performances. It's a phantom. We use it and yeah. we, uh, we think it's necessary, but it's not uh, necessarily the thing that, that we work for. Yes, no, no, thank you. And I'd like Shaobuna Berlin, you guys also think globally on touring, showing your work, getting inspired from places. Um, and where you go, on the other hand, the outlook might be grim. I think Germany thinks perhaps till next summer there will be no public soccer games, things, they will, they, will, they will not allow it. And they might happen, but without audiences and who knows what this will mean for music concerts and things. And of course, uh, that paradox that churches seem to be open, uh, but theaters not, yeah. but also then perhaps people who run the churches killing their worshipers, you know, being in, irresponsible. And there's, a, uh, a, Gregor, a very significant development. You are guys are building a new theater you have a vision, we also have the means and you will build a new space. I really would like you to talk about that new thing that at the moment, if I understand right, does not exist yet. It hasn't been built. It's just an architect, a New York architect you work with who helped you to design, but it will be built and it's something new. So um, tell us uh, about the vision, the idea of what you have. I think this is important also for the global theater world um, to really have the means artists let that you guys artists are in charge. So great credit of the country of Poland despite all complications that artists are in charge to designing and creating a theater for the 21st century. Now even being pushed with the nose into the dog shit of the digital world in a way, one would say oh, the great opportunity of it. So what, what, what are you guys planning? How is it going to look like? What is your vision? And that's the time right now, change it. Mm, you know, it's like the, this works, uh, it takes like, like more than 20 years. Uh, we've been, we, because we work in the very little shelter, which was built during the second war. And that is our uh, main stage. It's in the cellar under the underground. 
and uh, it was 39 and uh, the sh this theater was built as a shelter so that's why it's very concrete a lot of beton and very narrow because uh, the the function was that they built this theater as well as a shelter against the invasion of uh, Germans at that time, fascists, whatever. So that, that, that we working in this space. So we think a lot about uh, what will happen if we go uh, on, uh, uh, underneath, what will go when we go uh, under the earth. So we said the first, our idea was we would like to have this stage, which is really zero ground I mean, uh, equivalent with the surface of the ground. And that is our stage, that is our audience, that is our, and access to this uh, space must be from the different uh, uh, ways. And uh, we thinking uh, about the new concept, which is a lot of ideas from the past, especially from the Greek theater. We don't concern any uh, uh, ideas from the Italian stage or the, uh, ideas of the romantic theater with the garden, with the stairs and so on and so. And we don't think about that is uh, kind of the mystery. Uh, we would like, uh, we planning, we design the theater, which is transparent. So it's a lot of windows. There's a, a lot of uh, natural light inside the, uh, inside the, uh, our, what we call it the big box. So we can use as well natural light from, uh, from the ceiling, from the sides. That is like uh, this, because it's not the stage, it's like we design we call it the big box. We have big box and, and the black box, which of course is after Meyerhold. Uh, and big box is something completely new that is like as much as possible big stage without, uh, uh, without any uh, machinery, without any audience, and, uh, and any, um, uh, it's a flat empty there and uh, two or three or four or five performances depending how we would like to create the audience and and we said as well what was very important at the time we discussed a lot uh, with Roman uh, that we would like to have a big theater for the big audience but we would like to have this privilege that we can play for 200 people for 300 people or 500 people or, for, or 50 people so that is completely flexible how we design it, uh, the performance there. And uh, that is like, it's very, the, the idea was that the theater is open, transparent and uh, kind of democratic, let's say, if you can use it. So it's very accessible from outside. And, uh, and we can, uh, this building when it will, uh, uh, when we, the, this building is in the center of Warsaw, this is very important, a very special grant as well, in the front of Culture Palace, it's really center as historical center and ideological center, because as, as well, we are in the part of ghetto, where was the ghetto in, uh, so we in the, in this uh, um, region, so we have the respect for that, and after the second war, of course, that was the uh, manifestation, communist manifestation uh, um, square. So that is a very meaningful place for us and it's really in the center and it's designed uh, for, uh, for the future. We don't know, Frank, now what will be the situation about this building because we achieved everything what we can achieve, but we didn't start the, the building to build it. And, uh, and now we have permission, everything is okay, but the crisis which is coming uh, in Poland, the crisis is, which is now in Warsaw already, the president of Warsaw said that it's a big, big crisis because that is as well political because government and local institutions, local uh, towns, that uh, Warsaw is without the money. So we, we know that we build it, but we don't know, we can't say when. It's supposed to be open in four years time, but now we don't know uh, but as I said, the ideology behind this is very, very, very big. And Thomas Pfeiffer from Soho, if his he, team is a, is a great, great team and is really honest to work with him because he start to talk about what it means theater for us, what it means. And he was watching the performances. He said, I see that your performances <laughs> are very, very fragile. So I'm going to be like big, massive, very massive building 
because you have to protect uh, what you play inside. Mm -hmm. And especially in Warsaw, which is uh, really historically uh, have very harsh, harsh really uh, uh, memory what happened in the past. And he said, it, you still need a shelter and that is a shelter. And I hope that uh, we really, I don't know even if we, uh, how we can use it. I don't know if we, they, the building will be in our lives, but I know that the building will be, the, mm. and the building will be very important, big statement for Warsaw because it's yeah. visible, it's strong, it's powerful, and the quality of uh, this design and this what we're going to do is timeless. Yeah. So, <laughs> Frank, so, um, I yeah, think I'm very um, proud of our team and. Uh, yeah. I think it will be also for the city of Warsaw, a fantastic a symbol of reinvention of a creativity, giving a sign that Warsaw is part of the, of the 21st century of the world and people will look up and a lot of people will come and travel to Poland, to Warsaw to see it. Roman, did the digital play a role? Did you have that already in mind, projections, uh, VR, 360, <clears throat> when, you, when you were thinking about the new, new architecture? Well, uh, no. Well, no, and yes, because uh, we we were thinking about uh, architecture as a neutral space for creators, uh, not uh, designed or defi de defined uh, space. Because in a in a traditional theatrical space, everything is already designed and defined. Uh, usually, you you have to to uh, to, to cross all these architecture barriers like steps, uh, big uh, gates. There's nothing of this kind in this project. And because this is the theater for future, we didn't, we decided to not to design the technology because we don't know what will be uh, technical possibilities for theater and performing arts in uh, four or five years time. Uh, the building was supposed to be open in 24. So uh, uh, having in mind the, uh, the tempo uh, of, of the development of the te technologies, we cannot predict. So, uh, so it's really open. It's a huge, huge space, as Gregor said, uh, over two, uh, 2,500 square meters and uh, 16, 17 meters uh, high. Uh, so it's really huge. You, you cannot just see the, the walls when you're in the center of the space. Uh, so it allows uh, everything. So you can, you can shape this space with your creativity and Im imagination. And, uh, and at the same time, is, it is as much simple as it's possible. So, uh, the, uh, so we believe that low-tech low, low -tech, uh, uh, is, is really uh, important uh, for future theater, um, uh, theater art. So by in a way, you create the space, you create the possibility for the possibility. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible and, to think, yeah. And I, if I can something add, uh, I really, it's this situation in culture, this disaster reminds me of martial law in 80s uh, and the beginning of new democracy. And of course uh, it refers to the period after second world war when Europe and the whole globe was uh, re like uh, recovering from recurring uh, from, from the disaster of war. And the uh, development of cultural institutions was crucial. You remember that Avignon Festival and Edinburgh Festival were uh, founded uh, as, as the sign that people are coming, returning to life. And life means, means culture. Everyone now is focusing on the screens and watching films, uh, listening to radio, theater broadcasting. Culture will really play important role in this post-coronavirus world. So I strongly believe that our mm -hmm. uh, building, our idea of a new, new theatrical space will be really a sign of uh, returning to life. Revival. Revival, yeah. yes. Revival. Revival, yeah. I think in the way once theater is working up again and the life and the society is okay. This is why theater is so important, the seismograph. You can see everything. That's why we study it and why we love it and um, are so deeply affected by its things on a TV show, we kind of what we would never tolerate in a theater 
it's a different standard and it really means things are up. Incredible to think that Tia Varsova is in a bunker that was built against the Nazis. Um, now you are in your homes, uh, confined, but having in your mind a space that is gigantic that will be done, hopefully it's imagined, an imaginary theater is still at the moment. Um, I heard uh, Agatha talk to me about it. There's a, a Trojan project or is a, a something what, what will be what you are you dreaming up for the opening of post-corona world is there something is there something special you have in mind because of course it will be a significant thing and i guess all these thousands of hours of technical and architecture meeting you must also think what's going to happen when you open it uh, the, the, so, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Help. It, yeah, I think it's it's a good opportunity to, to mention about our plans to uh, to make an open call for uh, for young creators uh, for digital theatrical projects. This is what we are planning to make in autumn, uh, a kind of very wide open call uh, for projects which will combine performative uh, uh, tools and performative art with digital uh, with digital tools uh, media uh, and and of course we we are still planning real productions and we are premieres uh, Grzegorz is making tempest which is due to open in october and we are collaborating with luke uh, percival the belgium uh, director who is supposed to direct uh, three sisters in spring next year uh, but starting so, rehearsals still this year in the November, so like that will be the first residential kind of collaboration. So yes, we, we really uh, we, we think like in two streams. The, the one stream is uh, uh, supporting our plans and the second new uh, new activity in digital uh, environment. Mm -hmm. But I would say that we are somehow uh, you know fragile and like we are not going into the thematic of Corona as such, because we think we just need to think about the values. And of course, we are now witnessing the situation when within one weekend or a week, like the European Union, as we knew, just collapsed and like all the borders were closed again. And uh, we are now all defined to stay at homes, but then to stay in our countries. And actually this openness of the borders is really not a question for now. Like nobody knows the answer. And it happened like so fast. So for sure, everything what we were thinking about, like the regions, like thinking about this, what connects us, where are the differences now have like new, uh, new light, new context in which we need to, to think about it. We, I don't think that we would like to you know, always underline that we are under the pandemic, but I'm sure that in all our hearts, minds and plans, this fact, of this experience that we are now all struggling somehow, not always in the empowering way, uh, will be something that we will take into consideration. Mm -hmm. But as new... in Poland, you know, we know how to make it like in between the lines. In between the lines. So this new project you just announced is you will ask uh, artists to participate in the project of Tia Varsova? Yeah, we, yeah. We, uh... we... Roman? Yes, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, the project will be based on uh, our previous experiences and workshops uh, uh, based on uh, terrain formula. There was uh, Terran, Terran Warszawa and Terran TR. Maybe you remember a performance by Grzegorz Jarzyna, Risk Everything, which was presented mm -hmm. in New York. It yeah. was one of the results of one of these workshops. Uh, uh, so we used to work uh, in non-theatrical places in Warszawa in 2004 and 5. In 2014, we invited some uh, talented new emerging directors and dramaturgs to uh, to make their own pieces with uh, with our ensemble. And now, and now we are making uh, the same, uh, but in a digital uh, space. It will be also an open call for uh, artists, not only performative artists, but also uh, from visual arts or video uh, or programmist even. And the idea is to combine um, theatrical tools with digital uh, uh, art or digital tools um, to place our some of some part of our activity in the internet. 
uh, of course, it's it's a proposal to to develop new um, new com new competences, but also uh, it's a way to enlarge our audiences. And what we've been observing now that is that many people from small towns all over Poland are following our broadcasting of our performances. Uh, these people uh, don't have access to our performances uh, every day. So it's, it's really, uh, I mean, and, and they are very dedicated, devoted to, cult, to theater culture. They react very emotionally. So I see a chance in, in connecting with these new audiences with digital tools. Great, so in this time brings out new connections locally in Warsaw, uh, Gregor is talking to the neighbors while he do his plans. Uh, artists talk together but also people from all over Poland see the performances and then when they come to Warsaw they will know about you guys and they might even know about the new building and come and create something uh, um, and, and new so things are really um, are changing you also have traditionally invited filmmakers novelists people who are not theater people Dora Tomaslowska and others you know to come early on you have been a pioneer in opening uh, the doors of theater the idea that you now have a space with this translucent light comes in as non-defined inside, open for even the unknown. Um, I think it's a fantastic and brilliant idea and uh, we all will be very curious what you come up with. We know how much work stands behind this, how much dedication and also how much exceptional talent um, is it. And I'm sorry that uh, also for you guys, all these plans are in the air that uh, hope that the city of Warsaw will keep that up, uh, this extraordinary project. And this virus really, of course, is disrupting um, everything and uh, but it's one of the three things I think Fernando Pessoa said uh, you know that but they are certain you know this one is that you will be interrupted in uh, whatever you are doing so really thank you for for taking the time after a long and a hard week for sharing um, you have been often to the Siegel before also um, Tia Varsova so thank you for early on sharing um, your experience and your work you were at St. Anne's and Susan Feldman who brought you over and at BAM and we all um, look forward to seeing the work of Tia Varsova and um, maybe we check in once again in a couple of months or whatever from now, let's see how long it all goes, what has changed and whatnot, but it's really um, a real insight into uh, um, the Polish situation, which has a ray of hope, I have to say, compared to many, many other talks we have here that you engage in with the future building things, you're know, trying to make something happen, that you're independent, of course, it's not commercial what you do, um, it is subsidized by government, and this is a good thing, and the, but still with all the freedom um, you have to create something, it's extraordinary what mankind uh, creates in that way. So um, thank you really for, for, for listening. Uh, to our listeners also, thank you. We know how much is up there online and, uh, and uh, how busy we all of a sudden become, uh, and uh, we still have to look for time to read a book. Um, I hope you join us next week. The great uh, Milo Rao from Switzerland, who's based in Belgium, uh, will be with us. Richard Schachner, the legendary, the significant thinker and philosopher and also practitioner of theater. And of course, um, the uh, guy who created the part of the performance art, performance about will be with us. And I cannot wait to hear what, what he thinks. Basil Jones from the Handspring, the great Handspring puppet company from South Africa. And uh, we'll be here. Arthur Ciel from France, who is developing in Rennes, a response, one of the few theaters, if we, I understand right in France, that tries to grab and deal uh, with the situation. And then also the great Guillermo Calderon from Chile, a really great playwright director whose plays always have been a socially engaged uh, uh, a context and content, but truly also an artist uh, uh, to the core. So, um, and I hope it will be as illuminating as it was today uh, for today to listen to you so really thank you um, for um, joining us and really all the best for the theater and um, uh, stay safe and um, and uh, continue the good work thank you all thank you Frank thank you, thank you very much, very much. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you very thank much you. bye bye thank you thank bye. you to Round. stay safe <clears throat> and thank you for Hal Round from Emerson College hosting us and it's a, a big privilege to be here every week uh, thank you